USA just released fully functioning female robots. It seems that the technological hustle in America never ends. Let's take a look at the latest happenings in the American robotic sphere. All new Bat Robot. Bat flight is fiendishly complex, requiring a system of muscles, bones, and joints that incorporate folding of the wings in every wing beat. The force that bat wings generate comes from a strong but flexible covering of the skin, as opposed to the rigid feathers used by birds. Basically, of all of the flying beasts in the world, if you're going to pick one to try to emulate, don't pick a bat. Except, that's exactly what US researchers did when they created this robotic bat, dubbed B2, to help them understand bat flight. In an article published in the journal Science Robotics, they explain how they stretched a 56 micrometer thick, silicone-based skin over B2's wings, enabling it to morph its articulated structure in midair without losing an effective and smooth aerodynamic surface. B2 can execute sharp diving maneuvers and banking turns and, as well as providing a way to mimic and study the flight mechanisms of real bats, it may feed into the design of more agile flying robots of the future, helping us reach inaccessible places without sustaining damage or causing injury. Introducing the Peregrine Falcon Robot The idea for this perching robot came from Stanford University engineer William Roderick, was looking for a way to make a positive impact on the environment using his background in robotics. It struck me as I was watching birds perching and flying through a forest that, if there were a robot that could act like a bird, that would unlock completely new ways to study the environment, Roderick says. Roderick and his colleague, Professor Mark Kutkowski, teamed up with Professor David Lentink at the University of Groningen to design aerial robots with bird-like claws that enable them to land on and grasp irregularly shaped branches. Similar robots could eventually be used in environmental monitoring, for instance, to raise the alert when there is a forest fire or to study wild animals. For now, just understanding and mimicking what birds do is proving quite a challenge. Perching requires strong legs and a good grasp, but also the branch needs to be approached at the right angle and speed to nail the landing. In a Science Robotics article, the researchers described how they modeled their robot's legs on those of a peregrine falcon, incorporating motors to rotate the hips in the direction of the perch and artificial tendons that flex the toes and lock to grip. Robot buoys track Atlantic whales. A Cape Cod Science Center and one of the world's largest shipping businesses are collaborating on a project to use robotic buoys to protect a vanishing whale from lethal collisions with ships. A lab at Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution developed the technology, which uses buoys and underwater gliders to record whale sounds in near real time. The robotic recorders give scientists, mariners, and the public an idea of the location of rare North Atlantic right whales, says Mark Baumgartner, a marine ecologist with Woods Hole whose lab also operates the buoys. The whales number less than 340 in the world, and ship strikes are one of the biggest threats to their existence as they travel through some of the busiest stretches of ocean on the planet. Now, French shipping giant CMA-CGM is working with Woods Hole to deploy two of the robotic buoys off of Norfolk, Virginia and Savannah, Georgia. We have to change our industrial practices when whales are around. That's what this tech enables, Baumgartner said. Having the industry tell us what works and what doesn't is the best way to have solutions that will actually be implemented. Basketball robot built by students. She never said one word during the entire show, but it was clear that Asteria was the star of a presentation at St. Gabriel's Catholic Elementary. The grade three and four students cheered loudly when Asteria shot a ball through a portable basketball hoop, and they shared looks of astonishment as she weaved around a series of bowling pins without knocking any over on the gym floor. Asteria, you see, is a robot and the working product of a local all-girl robotics team known as the Amazon Warriors. Amazon announces Software Center in India. Having launched a new kind of home robot, called Astro, in markets like the US, Amazon will now open a full-fledged robotic software development center in India, dedicated to the development of its consumer robotics division. Amazon says that Astro was the first robot from this division, and it will be bringing more. It then hosted a virtual event for the public on 2 June called All About Astro, to discuss its efforts in the consumer robotics space. Last year, we unveiled our first consumer robot, but it certainly will not be our last. This new consumer robotics software development center will help support our growing consumer robotics division and attract top talent to work on world-class technology products. India is an innovation hub, 
Having this center here will help Amazon create better consumer robotics experiences for customers worldwide," said Ken Washington, Vice President, Consumer Robotics, Amazon, in a blog post. Ford's robot helps the disabled. For years, robots are seen as the enemy of assembly line workers. They are often regarded as replacements for real people working on jobs because they never complain, don't tire, and don't have emotions to deal with. But Ford doesn't believe that robots can completely replace humans in car production. The company believes they can assist them, case in point, Robbie, a collaborative robot, or cobot, designed to aid assembly line workers with disability and reduced mobility. Robbie was an award-winning research project, designed to show that disabled people and those with reduced mobility could take on jobs in manufacturing without the need for protective devices or safety barriers. The project was supported by RWTH Aachen University and the Landschaftsverband Rhineland, or LVR, the largest service provider for disabled people in Germany. LVR provided €372,000 in funding. Dietmar Bronner was worried that his 30-year career with Ford would be over because of recurring health issues, which resulted in reduced mobility in his shoulder and wrist. Now he's found a new buddy with Robbie, with the cobot aiding him on a wider range of tasks. And like Dietmar Bronner, Ford's new robot will help hundreds others to do their job in a conducive environment. Robbie the Cobot went on an 18-month trial before becoming a permanent part of the team. It's created to collaborate with people with limited mobility and disabled people by taking on duties that would otherwise be difficult or impossible for them. Now that Robbie's permanent, Ford could install more Cobots in its production plants to broaden the working opportunities to a more diverse range of people. Fruit Picking Robots Robots can do a lot. They build cars in factories. They sort goods in Amazon warehouses. But there are some things robots still cannot do. Things that sound quite basic in comparison, like picking an apple from a tree. It's a simple thing for humans, says robotics researcher Joe Davidson. Creating a robotic implement that can simply pick an apple and drop it into a bin without damaging it is a multi-million dollar effort that has been decades in the making. Teams around the world have tried various approaches. Some have developed vacuum systems to suck fruit off trees. Davidson and his colleagues turned to the human hand for inspiration. They began their efforts by observing professional fruit pickers and are now working to replicate their skilled movements with robotic fingers. Their work could help to transform agriculture, turning fruit picking, a back-breaking, time-consuming human task, into one that's speedy and easier on farm workers. These efforts have gained impetus recently as researchers point to the worsening conditions for farm workers amid the climate crisis, including extreme heat and wildfire smoke, and also a shortage of workers in the wake of the pandemic. The technology could lead to better working conditions and worker safety, but that outcome depends on how robots are deployed in fields, farm workers' organizations say. That's it for this video, folks. See you another time.